healing. Tremendous healing. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Second Samuel chapter 6. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse uh, 14. 14 through 23. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Um, and it says, And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly tunic. So David and all Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with much shouting and blowing the trumpets. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michael, the, the daughter of Saul, you want to pay attention to that. The daughter of Saul looked down from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. Uh, in other words, that there was uh, there was uh, another translation said that uh, she had uh, disdain for him. Uh, verse uh, 17, the ark of the Lord was placed inside the special tent that David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. Verse 18, when he had finished, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a gift of food to every man and woman in Israel, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins. Then everyone went home. When David returned to home, returned home to bless his family, Michael came out to meet him and said in disgust, how glorious the kingdom of Israel looked today. He exposed himself to the servant girls like, like an uh, indecent person might do. David retorted to Michael, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me above your father and his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord. So I am willing to act like a fool in order to show my joy in the Lord. Yes. And I am willing to look even more foolish than this. But I will, I will be held in honor by the girls of whom you have spoken. Verse 23. So Michael, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her life. Now, uh, this is the thought that I want to run with today. And uh, <laughs> uh, this may catch some of you off guard. And I promise you that if you just... Follow along with me, you'll understand when we get to the end of this. But this is just what I heard, and this is really a declaration that, that we're going to make uh, over, our, over our lives. Uh, and, but the thought that I had today was, Michael, get the hell out of me. <laughs> Michael, get the hell out of me. Now, we always thought that hell was a curse word, and actually hell is not a curse word. Hell is a place. And so I want to bring understanding there right there. Uh, because uh, growing up, like, Ooh, you know, don't say hell. Don't say hell because, you know, that's a curse word. No, hell is a place. We have reduced hell now to a curse word. <laughs> but hell is actually a place. And, 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 and as you see here, that uh, by the end of this, uh, there will be a declaration that you will make yourself that everything, uh, everything that we've learned about Michael and this spirit that she was running with, uh, really coming from the pit of hell, you're going to say, get the hell out of me, <laughs> okay? That uh, we're going to see here this, this story of uh, with David and, and, and Michael, this whole interaction. But, but let's look at uh, the behind the scenes deal here, uh, what, what we just read. David now, David, the Bible said he was dancing before the Lord. Why was he dancing before the Lord? Well, if you read, um, you read some verses uh, uh, before that in that same chapter, David and his crew basically, they were on their way to pick up the ark of the Lord. The ark was stolen by the Philistines at the time um, uh, Samuel gave the word to, uh, Samuel when he was young, gave the word to uh, Eli. And, uh, and, but, and at that particular time, the Philistines, uh, because of uh, Eli allowing his sons to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, uh, there was this, there was like just this um, judgment that came. So Samuel gave the word to Eli that this is what's gonna happen. So here come the Philistines, they come in, 
you know, they just, you know, run right over uh, uh, the children of Israel, and they, they kill Eli's sons, and they take the, the, the ark, the presence of God, which they thought it was just a box. And so it's like, hey, you know, we're just going to take this and run with it. And then all of a sudden now, Eli dies after hearing about his sons. So now fast forward now, David says, I'm going to go get the presence of the Lord back. I'm going to go get what rightfully belongs to the children of Israel. So he says, so he goes, he has his crew, he's on his way to go get it. And um, when he, he, gets the, he gets the ark, uh, and this is a lot more to it uh, with us as far as the ark concerned. The Philistines actually sent the ark away because that's when you, uh, that's when you read about the story with they put the ark with the, um, next to the idol of Dagon and the idol fell and all that stuff. They seen the power and they sent it away. So now David gets the ark now and he puts it on the cart. Now the Bible says that the ark was supposed to be carried by the priests on their shoulders. And so David now puts it on this cart uh, the same way the uh, Philistines did uh, of bringing a truck around the cart. And so the, the, uh, the cart, uh, uh, the Bible says that the camel had stumbled and caused the ark uh, to almost fall over. And so one of, the, one of the guys that was with David, Uzzah, went and touched the ark, touched the ark now to just stop it from falling over. But no one was supposed to touch the ark. Okay? And so because of that, he was struck dead. So now all of that happened. Now everything stopped. Everything stopped. They was on his way back, bring the ark back. Everything just stopped because he just saw his friend got struck down uh, uh, dead because he took the ark. So now David was in this place now where he's just like, man, just freaking out. He's sad. He's upset. And he's like, man, God, you know, why is this happening? Everything? I'm just trying to, you know, you know, just do the right thing here and all of that. But the reality of me is, is that although David had the right intentions, he brought the, uh, the ark back the wrong way. And so just to take a pause here, and uh, we must understand that you can have the right, the right motives and do the right thing and all that stuff, but there's a way to do it. And so in the midst of all of that, in the midst of David being in depression, in the midst of David being flustered, being depressed, and, and just like, man, I don't see a way out here, he hears that the ark now was blessing Obed-Edom's house because, like I said, everything stopped. So they put it in Obed-Edom's house, and the Bible said that uh, that Obed-Edom was blessed and his whole household, everything, because the ark was there. And so now, uh, when David heard about this, he said, okay, there was a uh, uh, just a building up on the inside of him. Okay, He got the courage to stand up and go get the ark. And so many of you today, the Lord is saying to you that in the midst of your despair, in the midst of your disappointment, in the midst of your discouragement, he says, get up from here because what you're hearing right now is an encouragement. What you're hearing right now is, is that you're able to press forward. You're able to move forward. That what you had tried to do, what you had tried to accomplish, although there was a setback and everything, God says, just get up from here now. You, it's time for you to get up and keep it moving. It's time for you to start again. It's time for you to begin again, like we were saying earlier. So David, after hearing the testimony of what was happening now, he gets up and he, he goes back and he uh, gets the ark. And this time, he carries the right way. So now here's where we are here, where he's bringing it back into uh, into the place, the city of David. Into He's bringing it back into the camp now. And there's dancing. I mean, they're just having a big party, just rejoicing, even to the point the Bible says that they would dance so hard that he came out of his priestly garments. So now while all of this stuff is happening now, here is his wife, Saul's daughter. Saul's daughter now, standing in the window, sees David coming, and the only thing now that she can do is have a disdain for him. Now, that kind of bothers me because while everybody was downstairs in the street celebrating, she was in the window and not one thing about her <laughs> said, ooh, I need to get down there and party because not only my husband is home, but my king is home, but they go to the ark. But she didn't care about anything about that, okay? And so all she could do is just like have a disdain for David. So all this stuff is going on, David is like just, just losing and having a good time, and people are having a good time, 
you know, they're celebrating what the Lord was doing. There was a praise that was going on. And so the ark was placed in the tent, the Bible says, and they were sacrificed and burnt off for the peace offerings. And when he finished, he turned around and he blessed the people. So after he danced, he just started just blessing everybody, right? He started giving them gifts, okay? Based upon what was, you know, based upon what was happening and all that. Now, in the midst of all that, after he got through blessing the people, David now turned around to bless his own house. And so that's when Michael came down to meet him and said, the first thing she could say, oh, you know, how you dance. How you dance so foolishly before uh, the servant girls. How you dance uh, so well. How you made yourself look like, uh, make so foolish in front of those who serve you. Now, let me tell you something about folks who are hurting. You know, and folks who are offended, okay? Uh, that, that, that these individuals now uh, have a unique way of guarding their heart. Here's how that they would begin to they would begin to bring up an issue without really dealing with the real issue. And see, this is what we see here. That Michael, instead of really dealing with which what was what was going on was a heart issue here, that uh, she brought up the fact about his dancing, about his leaping, and all that stuff, which made no sense. It had nothing to do with anything. But her real offense was, was that she had some issues in her heart, okay? The Bible said that, that there was a disdain that came uh, from her heart. And so uh, she began to uh, tell David, well, you know, David, listen, you know, you, you, know you, you did all this in front of your servant girls and everything. And David said, well, now, wait a minute. Let me just explain something to you. Number one, since you're using the fact that, you know, I'm a king, and I shouldn't dance like that before uh, people and I, you know, or, or, or for, or in front of my service like that. I should have some kind of decorum. Since you're going to go that way, <laughs> let me tell you that I was not chosen by name. God chose me. All right? And so, uh, as a matter of fact, God uh, overlooked uh, everyone, your father and everyone in this house. And so now he said, now if you think that was foolish, then you haven't said nothing yet because I'm going to really get foolish, all right? And so uh, the Bible says here that uh, David goes on to say that the, that the ones you think that I look foolish in front of, they're going to be blessed. As a matter of fact, they're going to speak well of me. They're going to be blessed by what has happened. And the Bible says from that moment on until she died, uh, Michael did not have any children. Now, I want you to understand that. Just follow along with me. I'm, I'm not going to get to uh, what we are trying to, uh, what I'm trying to really uh, help you understand here, what I believe the Lord is saying. That uh, your, your praise tells your testimony. Okay? Your praise tells your testimony. So now, let's look at again about Michael. So we understand about David. Let's look at Michael. Number one, Michael was, Michael was Saul's daughter. Now, that's very important to understand because she was a daughter of the king, okay? So if anybody was going to understand how to treat the king, how to address the king, Michael would know because she lived in the house of the king, okay? So that's very important to know. Uh, number two, uh, Michael, uh, she, she despised David who was the king. Okay, so we see here that that uh, there was something that was going on in her heart that caused her to have this thing. And the third thing that is very important here, we see that she is she remained childless. Now the word daughter uh, means a female offspring, a female female child or person in relation to her parents, a person related as if by ties binding daughter to parent. Now. She was an offspring of Saul. What do we know about Saul? Saul, uh, he was, although he was big and, and huge in stature and all that, and looked good, looked the part and everything, uh, Saul was rebellious, okay? Saul had the obedience problem, all right? And so those same, uh, uh, those same uh, attributes and those same uh, tendencies that, that, that Saul had, the same spirit that Saul had, it rolled over to the next generation now. So the Bible says that she was a daughter or an offspring of Saul. So now we see here that really the reality is that David really 
wasn't a problem. There was something that was going on in uh, Michael's heart that caused her to be upset with David. Let me say again that when you have a hurt person, uh, a hurt person will always make something else their distraction without dealing with the real issue. So in other words, somebody can come up to you who, who has been hurt, who has been wounded, and they will come to you and say, oh, it's your fault. And they'll make you think that it's your fault, okay? You know, and uh, just the little bit slightest thing that you can do, it touches a nerve. And so all of a sudden now, you're the problem. But the reality of it is, you're not the problem. You're not the problem. It's, it's, it's a cover-up to what's going on in their hearts. So now, we see these things here. We got David. We got Michael. And so now, understanding about David, understanding about Michael, what Holy Spirit is saying is, is that in many of us, we have these two situations going on within us. We have these two individuals going on within us. Let me explain. So on one end, you got a David that's in you. God, I want to praise you. God, I want to lose it for you. God, I just want to just worship you. God, I just want to just bless you. You know, God, I want to just serve. God, I want to go all out for you. God, I want to I want to just walk in my purpose. But then on the other side, you got the Michael side of you that says, well, you know what? There's some things in my heart here that's really stopping me that I'm not sure. So now you have individuals now, and there are many of you who are like in this tug of war on the inside. To where you want to do things for God, but on the other side here, there are some offenses in the heart. You got a disdain in your heart. There is some things going on in the heart, in the mind, that stop you from really going after the purpose of God. So you got this war going on here. And so now, God says today, he says, today I want you to just simply make a decision to tell Michael to get the hell out of your life. That means tell Michael and everything that's pertaining to Michael, everything that's aligned with hell to get out of your life. Everything if you need, and this is what Holy Spirit was saying and ministering to the heart because a lot of times we have wounded hearts. We have things that we're carrying in our hearts that stop us from moving into our purpose. And so there's this war. And this is what I've seen this week and over the weekend as I was just preparing for this. That many of you have been in this war. You've been in this battle. And this is the reason why, okay? This is the reason why. This is what stops you from really going after God. David, th David, although he had mistakes, although he had all kind of issues and everything, the Bible said that God called David a man after his own heart, okay? Because David had such a passion and such a love for God, but David also knew how to make things right, okay? He knew how to get it right back with God. And so uh, uh, today, uh, the Lord is just simply saying is that don't let the issues of your heart, don't let the bitterness of your heart, don't let uh, the things that you carry, some of the things that we carry in our hearts, it really doesn't have anything to do with us. It's the things that we have carried over from the past generation. The Bible said that she was a daughter or an offspring of Saul. So all that stuff that was going on in Saul, it was just, it just rolled down to her, okay? Because, because the reality is, it's like, man, how, you know, how, how could she address David like that? And that was the very thing that came with my spirit. Because I'm like, man, she knows how to address the king. She knows how to talk to the king. And many of us in worship, you know, we, <laughs> you know, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I've seen this before, how, you know, we, in some aspect, we know how to worship God. Okay? We know how to worship God, but we don't. Because there's something going on in the heart. And so God says, you know, I'm removing all of the uh, excuses. I'm removing all of the things that could be a distraction. What is the thing that's, what's, what's, what's that thing that's really stopping you? from moving into the purpose of God. What is that? The Holy Spirit is here now to break the tug of war. The Holy Spirit right now is, he's here to break the tug of war because it's just been just a battle. On the inside, it's just been a battle. And the Lord said, I know, I know, I know you're willing. I know, I know it, I know it. 
And I also know that there are some things that have wounded you. There are some things that have called you to say, you know what? I love God. I love God. But you know, I, I just, I got a problem with this. I can't tell you how many times I've heard many people, they, they say, you know what? I love God so much. I do. But I just, I just got a problem with church for Okay? And I, I got a problem with, you know, you know, because it was something that happened in the past. Something that happened in the past that carried over is not being allowed to fester in the heart. So the Bible says here that she remained childless, which means a child represents fruit. She was unable to produce fruit. Because, not because of what David, and many have preached this before and said, you know, it was because of what David said. No, 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 no. No, it was because in that moment now, because she chose to stay right there and not really deal with the issue of her heart. That's what caused her not to be able to produce fruit. Whatever you hold on to affects your fruit. Whatever you hold on to, it affects your money, it affects your relationships, it even affects your health, what you carry, okay? Even when, you know, if you carry someone else's offense, you know, that's why, that's why the Lord says that, that you know, when it comes to forgiveness, you got to forgive from the heart. Okay? You have to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart because out of the flow is the issue of life. And so, the, here's, here's, here's because of one decision. Here's one decision. It cost her from having kids. Never had children. And so, today, and so today, I just, I just, I just want, I just want to just minister to you. Uh, right now, let me just close there. What is it that's in your heart that's been stopping you from really going after God? And when I say go after God, I mean grab all that He has for you, really walking in the purpose and the call for your life. What is that? Let's 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 take off the cover. Let's take off the uh, the. the <laughs> The blockage, you know, the things, the, the, the guards. We, you know, we, we really got like security guards over our heart. Because it's, it's, a, that's a, it's a sensitive thing. It's easy for many of us just to carry it instead of, instead of dealing with it. But the enemy will never tell you what you would lose or what is at stake. He'll just tell you, hey, just keep carrying because you know, you know, you, you got a right to feel hurt. You have a right to carry it. You have a right to be upset. You have a right, you know, to never forgive them again. You got a right to because, you know, they messed you up. They messed you up. You got a right to. But he'll never tell you what's being lost in the process. So, I pray for you today. I pray right now that the tug of war ceases. I, I pray right now. I pray right now that that very thing that steals your praise, that very thing, and no one knows your story, just like David. David lost his mind. He began to lose it because he could look back on what happened and how God was so faithful enough to allow him to bring the presence back into where it was supposed to be. Don't let the issues of your heart stop your praise. Don't let the issues of your heart stop your praise. Don't let shame and guilt tell you you can't praise God. Don't let, don't, don't let the enemy, the enemy does that. He likes to whisper to you what you did before and all that stupid stuff. Right the wrong when you get ready to just express your even by, you know, you know, you know, saying something vocally to God or waving your hand, how you express yourself to God. You know, right at that moment, then he says, nah, you ain't got a right to do that. That's all he does. Mm -hmm. But it's in that moment. Now, you come too far. You come too far. 
So, Lord, I just pray for each and every one who's watching and everyone's here right now. The Father, the, 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 the Father, we just, we just, we just say right now <laughs> that 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 Michael Spirit, we just declare, we just declare right now, everything, everything that's pertaining to hell <laughs> that we have carried, that stopped our praise, that stopped us from really engaging with you. Mm. We get the hell out of us today. We command that stuff from hell to get out of us today. Get out of our hearts. Unforgiveness, you're from hell. Get out of our hearts. Bitterness, get out of our hearts. Go to hell where you belong. In the name of Jesus. And we allow the healing to be released. We allow healing to our hearts so that we can know him. Father, I bless you today. I thank you, Lord God, for old wounds being mended right now. No longer will there be a war on the inside of us, God. But Father, we are free today. We are free to be like David, God, and allow our praise to be our testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I love you. I love you. I worship you right now. I worship you right now. I bless you.